welcome back to another video uh, today i'm going to be doing something a little bit different i'm actually doing a review of some products that were sent to me by etcher uh, so this isn't a sponsored post but these were gifted to me by etcher and they sent them to me to try out and to give my opinion on uh, i have a set of postcards and two watercolor blocks so i'm going to do some watercolor painting today in this video and test out these products for you all so the first thing we're going to talk about actually has nothing to do with etcher uh, this is a little tin that i picked up that i thought was really cool that i thought i'd show you all uh this is a i purchased this at office works which if you're in australia is like a stationary type shop uh, and it's just a little pencil tin but it's made out of tin and it has these little sections so it's got one little palette that you can pull off and it's got an area that you can have pencils in down the bottom and so what I've done, I've actually converted this into a little watercolour tray. So I've added little magnets onto the backs of all of my watercolour um, uh, pans. So see, so I've just stuck these little magnets on. And because of that, and because it's on metal, it's obviously magnetised. And so the little trays stay in place and they don't get, you know, knocked around. And you can use it as a palette. So I've got little paints on one side and the other side of the tin I can use as a little mixing palette. And then it's got enough room underneath to have um, some pencils. So I thought this is a really cool idea. And if you could find something similar in, you know, in your area or in some shops around you, I thought it might be a good idea for you. Uh, yeah, I also did like a little swatch of all my colours that are in there. So I remember later on what colours I've used. Um, most of these are um, either Daniel Smith or a couple of um, schminky colours, uh, just watercolours. So yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. So I thought I'd show you that first. Uh, but anyway, back to the actual purpose of this um, little video. Uh, Etcher reached out and sent me some samples of some products that they have available. This here is a set of postcards. Uh, so you can see it comes in this really nice little box. Um, there's a whole bunch of postcards that have on the back of them printed the little address area and stamp area. And the other side is just blank. So the idea is that you can paint your own postcards which I think is a really cute idea. Um, it's really fun for maybe sending to clients or um, just for friends and family. If they've got like birthdays coming up and you wanna give them something a bit more personal, I thought that's a really cute idea. Uh, now the paper is cold press, I think it's 280 GSM. Uh, so it is quite heavy weight, but it also feels thin at the same time. To me, I wouldn't have thought this was a 200 and um, something, I forget exactly what it is, 280, I think it is GSM. It feels really thin to me. And I'm even before I started painting on them, I thought that maybe they'd be a bit too thin and they might buckle. So um, spoiler alert, they do. And I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, but anyway, uh, they are like a nice cute little postcard size though. So I did just tape it down and um, to try and keep it in place and to add a nice little border around it because I think that looks really cute and it helps to finish off the artwork. And then I just decided to freehand a little um, meadow or flower type painting on here. Now I know that this camera angle is terrible and you can't see what I'm doing. I do change the angle later on. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm not feeling 100% at the moment. The dreaded um, spicy flu went through my family when I was filming this particular video, which was about a week ago now. And so I'm still not 100% recovered from that. I... Um, we all got it and my daughter sort of had it and then it sort of went through all of us after that. But it was weird because we all had quite different symptoms. Um, I had ended up having quite bad um, joint pain and headaches and aches and pains and fatigue. And my son had very similar symptoms. But then my other two kids basically just had a sore throat and that was it. And then my partner had it as well and he was sort of over it in a couple of days. But it seems to be lingering around a bit more for me. I don't know why that is. I just, I'm really drained still. And so, yeah, that kind of put us all off doing everything for like about a week. We had to isolate at home for a week. The kids didn't go to school. I didn't do any work. My partner didn't go to work either. So yeah. Um, and I filmed this sort of during that time. So that's why I didn't do a voiceover while I was filming it because I was a little bit sort of, um, husky, let's say, and my voice was not so great. So uh, I just did some little time lapses and videos. And yeah, I didn't really have a plan for this. I just sort of, I've been painting some meadow um, inspired kind of paintings lately. So I was kind of in a mood to paint something similar. And overall, this 
painting on this surface was actually really nice. It is a cold pressed paper. I'm not usually a fan of cold press. Um, I prefer hot press, but it look, it was nice. Uh, as I said, though, it did seem it was very thin. Like you can see here, this is how much it buckled. And I wasn't using particularly heavy washes of paint at all. So it did buckle quite a bit. Um, and I also feel that for a postcard, I wouldn't really feel comfortable sending this as it is in the mail. Um, I feel like it would probably just get damaged. <laughs> so even though it's designed as a postcard, I think that you'll probably still need to put it into an envelope to actually send it um, if you want your whoever's receiving it to get it without it being damaged. Um, but look, it's still a really cute idea. And I think that, you know, if that's something they're interested in, have a go. So now I'm testing out the watercolor blocks. I was given a cold press block and a hot press block. Um, this is the cold press. These are both 300 GSM. So they're much heavier weight paper and you can I can kind of feel that straight away when I opened it up and felt the paper so as I was just saying I don't normally like using cold press paper I'm a fan of hot press I, I don't like the texture that you get in cold press papers um, but you know that's just a personal choice uh, because this is a watercolour block as well, it is um, gummed. That means that there is actually like glue on the edges to keep it in a block. Um, on this, on the cold press, it's glued on the two side edges um, and not all the way around. So you can kind of see the texture of the paper there a little bit, but you can see on either long side, the paper is loose, but the shorter side, the paper is glued. Um, so that's to keep it in the block form so that you can just paint on it without having to tape it down. Uh, I still decided to pop some tape around the edges because again, I like the look of having that nice clean edge, but because it's in a block, you don't really need to. That's just a, again, my personal choice. So for this one, I wanted to do a similar painting on the cold press block and the hot press block. So I just did a little, um, again, another field with flowers in it. I just made it up, um, sort of painted, you know, from imagination just to, you know, test out the paper. And this is the cold press, so it does have a bit of texture on it. You can't really see the texture from this angle, but when I do change the angle of the camera in a little while and I zoom in, you can see the texture quite clearly. And so I know some people really like that texture. I prefer um, hot press paper, which is a bit smoother. Um, but then again, the texture in this is really nice and it does actually create some really pretty effects, especially with the um, watercolours that I'm using. Some of these watercolours are granulating watercolours, so they do have a really nice granulation texture to them and a cold press paper does emphasise that more and highlight that that sort of granulation a bit more than a hot press paper does because it has little like divots and textures for the granulation to kind of sit in, you get like a really nice effect. So um, I find that that paper, this cold press paper really emphasised that granulation. So that was really pretty and I liked that. Um, the surface of the paper, look, I'm not a watercolour paper expert by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but it is really nice to paint on. Um, the paper absorbed the paint really well. Um, it's spread and blended really well. You can see how smooth the blending um, is up the top where it was kind of uh, wet on wet. Um, you can see that it's like made a really smooth sort of um, hazy kind of blend, which is really pretty. And um, then when it's, I'm painting sort of dry, um, on dry paper, you can see that the edges are a lot, um, what's the word? not blurry. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, it, the paint layered really nicely on it too. I found that the colours stayed quite vibrant. Um, that the colours didn't really dull when they dried as much, which was nice. And yeah, just generally speaking, it was a nice paper. Uh, like I said, I'm not a paper expert when it comes to watercolour. I just know what I like and what I don't like. And even though this is cold press, I liked, I enjoy painting on it. I thought it was really nice surface to paint on. And I was quite happy with that. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else to talk about in regards to this, really. Uh, I'm just kind of making it up as I go. Um, the paper uh, did start, like, in the areas where it sort of dried, I was able to darken it up a bit. I did um, dry it with a hairdryer um, in between. Um, I think it was at this point I, yeah, sort of dried it and then came back to it. Um but yeah, I um, yeah, I was really happy with it. I'm sorry, I don't really know what else to say about it. It's it's a nice watercolour paper. The size is A5, uh, which is, again, a really nice handy size. It's not too big, it's not too small. Um, you can sort of carry it around with you and take it out to paint if you're painting outside. 
and it would probably work really nicely again because it's a block. Um, it kind of holds itself together really nicely. And yeah, the, um, this is, yeah, so this is what it looks like when I had almost finished. I think I do still add a little bit of detail onto it in a minute, actually, uh, because I wanted to see what it was like um, and once I dried it and then I wanted to paint some details on to dry paper. So I blasted it with the hairdryer and then came back and added some flowers and some more details when the paper was dry. So you can see really clearly the texture in the cold press paper in this shot. Uh, you can see that it's a nice sort of even texture. It's quite natural looking as well. I know that some cold press papers can have like a really artificial kind of looking texture to them, but this one seems quite natural looking. And yeah, it was really nice to paint on. So here I am peeling off the tape, which again, the tape came off really easily. This is just washi tape, so it's not super sticky to start with, but it did peel off really easily. It didn't get stuck to the paper at all. And, you know, it didn't rip the paper up, which is always a nice thing when it comes to <laughs> putting this tape on paper. And yeah, I was really happy with how this came out. It's quite a cute little painting. The colors are really bright. Um, the, the lighting on this particular day wasn't fantastic. And again, because I was kind of sick, I wasn't really in the mood to set up, up a better position. So I just kind of yeah worked with what I had. Um, now the tape did peel quite easily as well on the edges. Uh, if any yarn is not familiar with working with a block, you can just put a palette knife in the edge and then run it along and that will break the paper away from the glue. Um, but this is the finished pa painting on the cold press paper. Uh, you can see, yeah, another good shot of the texture here on the paper. You can see that um, where the sort of um, texture of the paper is, uh, especially the paints that are granulating, you can see that they sort of settle into that texture really nicely. Uh, you can sort of see like that patch of blue. It's got some really nice granulation in it. And so that's a bit of a, a close-up shot. And uh, yeah, here we are with a kitty break because why not? It's been a while since the kitties have featured in one of my videos. This is Mr. Bean. Um, well, his name's not Mr. Bean, but we call him Beanie. <laughs> his name is Sir Fuzzy Beans of Meowington. Um, he is our farm boy. And here is Miss Luna who is having a snooze on the couch and looking adorable, as she always does. So anyway, <laughs> on to block number two. This is the hot pressed um, version of the Etcher watercolour paper. So this is again another watercolour block. So it is glued around the edges. This one is actually glued around all four sides. Um, so the cold press was only glued on two sides, but this one's glued all four sides. I'm not quite sure why they've done it differently. Um, you can see this is the corner where it's not glued. So that's where you would slip your palette knife in to break the paper away. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure why they only glue two sides of the cold press and four sides of the hot press. I'm not sure if there's a reason for that or not. I don't know. Um, Personally, I prefer all edges to be glued like this. Um, I think that it just provides extra stability in the paper and it doesn't sort of warp as much because it's nicely secured around all edges. Um, so yeah, I don't know why they're different. They just are. So that's, that's, that's there. <laughs> um, I did tape up the edges of this one again with the same washi tape just to have a nice border around it. And I'm painting pretty much the same painting. Um, it's slightly different, but essentially it's mostly the same because I wanted to be able to compare the two papers with a artwork that was very similar. Um, so yeah, this is a hot press surface. Again, it's 300 GSM and it's a much smoother surface compared to the cold press. Uh, there's no really obvious texture and the paint still went on really nicely. It's still, um, the colours blended nicely when it was wet. And yeah, personally, I prefer hot press paper. Again, it's just a personal choice. I like the smooth um, texture of hot press paper and that's what I like to paint on. Uh, I also find that if I'm going to go over the top of a watercolour with pencil or with um uh, like pen or any kind of other medium, I find that doing that on top of hot press paper that has no texture on it is a lot easier than doing it on top of a cold press paper that has texture, um, especially pencil, um, because the texture makes it hard sometimes to get the color off and to get the color on of the pencil on properly. Where if it's smooth, it, it seems to come off a bit easier. So that's probably why I prefer it, but you know, each to their own. Uh, 
the color and yeah the, the paint really again blended really nicely it was a really nice paper to work with the paint um, absorbed into the paper really easily um, it blended and it sort of bloomed really nicely as well when it was wet and there was no sort of areas that you know were uneven um, the paper worked nicely um, yeah again I don't really have much to say about it <laughs> like I'm not I'm not a paper expert when it comes to watercolor paper at all uh, I also seem to like, I do paint a lot of acrylic on top of watercolor rather than actual watercolor. Um, and when you're using acrylic on watercolor paper, the texture of the paper and the type of paper, it's kind of irrelevant. It doesn't really matter that much because the acrylic paint kind of seals and takes over anyway. So it doesn't matter. Um, but when you're actually using watercolor, obviously the texture of the paper makes a bit more of a difference. But I don't really know that much about it to be able to tell you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm not a great, a great kind of person to be reviewing watercolour paper. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> sorry, I'm still not great. I'm not well. My brain is just fuzz at the moment. I am, I have very little motivation to do anything. I'm still not feeling great. Um, I've kind of haven't even really gotten back into work properly yet. Um, there's some stuff at the studio that I should be doing, but... I just, I can't get motivated to do it. It doesn't help that it's cold here in Melbourne at the moment because it's winter and my studio is freezing. And when you're not feeling great, I, you don't want to be cold. So yeah, that's, that's not, that's not really helping the situation either. Um, yeah, so that's all I really need to have to talk about at the moment. <laughs> um, I'm going to fast forward and make this um, go a little bit quicker and then give you my final thoughts at the end. here is the finished painting on the hot press paper so you can see that again it's a very similar design to the other one um, not as much texture on this paper because it is hot pressed um, but the colors were still really nice they really stayed vibrant they stayed bright they um, were applied really nicely and yeah you can see that the colors are quite pretty again at the tape peel um, non-eventful uh, it peeled off really easily there was no tearing of the paper at all um, so yeah that was a good thing as well sometimes hot press paper can be a little bit more prone to tearing when you're taking off tape again because it's a smoother surface the tape sticks to it a bit more solidly and so it can sometimes rip when you're peeling it off but i didn't have any problems with it ripping with this particular paper um, i did find it a little bit harder to split this paper away from the gum on the edges um, maybe because it is around all sides but i found that the, the glue that they've used on this was a little bit more um, harder to break through and I had to go a little bit more carefully to make sure that I didn't actually rip the paper so I guess that's you know just part of having it gummed around the whole edge as opposed to just two edges but again I still prefer to have it around the whole edge uh, so yeah here is the side by side um, the hot pressed is on the right and the cold press is on the left. You can see that the cold pressed paper did warp a little bit more than the hot pressed. Um, I used about the same level of um, water on each of these. They weren't like a really heavy water-based sort of paintings, but the cold press did curl a little bit. Um, I don't know if that's just because it's, you know, that's just what cold press does. I'm not sure. But the hot press did stay a lot flatter um, once it had dried. 
But, I mean, look, honestly, it doesn't really matter that much. Um, I wouldn't say that they buckled. Like, it certainly wasn't buckling, but it was curling a little bit more than the hot press paper was. But overall, um, yeah, I really liked both these papers. Um, I guess that, you know, it just depends on whether you like hot press or cold press, but I was really happy with them. I think they're really nice um, and they're quite affordable as well. So that's something to keep in mind. And, uh, yeah, thank you to Etcher for sending them to me. And I'm... I will be back soon with another video, hopefully when I'm feeling better. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed watching me paint these little watercolours.